there are a few very distinct layers of uh, time in your work and the way they build in on various aspects of relationships between you and also these tangible and intangible aspects of human associations that come in so often with your work. Um, so just to begin with, I thought we could perhaps uh, speak about the work that you did with your grandparents, uh, What Remains. And um, in that, there's this stillness or slowness of time that um, longs to pause uh, for a memory almost, but also where aging as a process seems to rush into these um, images that are fading into ether in some way. Uh, could you speak about this relationship with time and the image in what remains? Yes, uh, I think you know, it was first time I was uh, looking at two people who were very close to me uh, at a point of their life when uh, they, you know, obviously they were retired and also, uh, also physically due to many uh, illness, they were restricted uh, to their, within their surroundings of uh, what they were living. And, you know, it made me look at how life is when you have kind of lived through almost everything, you know, you, you got married, you kept your job, and you raised children, and they are you know, now living their own life, you know, their own family. And then, you know, whatever you wanted to achieve, perhaps they wanted to achieve, they more or less had that. And then they were retired, then they were sick. So there was nothing left to do for them anymore. You know? um, at the same time, the only thing, only event that naturally will offer is uh, death. Um, and it is something obviously, you know, once you see that up, that up close, I think it obviously makes you stop. And uh, also to understand what sort of state that they are in, <clears throat> at least I wanted to understand that, or at least I wanted to, uh, you know, have that in that, in that work. Also, at the same time, you know, they are family. Right? They're very close to me, uh, especially growing up. Uh, I have spent much time with them. And uh, I think making photos was also a way to spend time with them. Uh, because also, again, it was a time when I was just after my university. You know, I was you know, the most uh, at the point of life when I think anybody is the most, uh, you know, uh, having the most energetic and the most fasted, fastest way of life, right? And, and, uh, and I, but then I'm with this, uh, my grandparents who are basically at a point where they can't do anything. You know, often the medium of photography is based on something happening, you know, it, it, it based itself from something that's happening and you are creating a frame from that. Uh, that, that often is a, a large part of photographic genre is based on that. But I was in a position also coming from a school which has a very strong documentary social route, you know, uh, stories which is much more action, you know, much more happening. Now I'm finding myself in this old house with this old couple where nothing is happening. So that's why objects, you know, photo uh, photo frames, telephones, you know, flower vases, windows, the dust in the corner, the wheelchair, the bed, all these still lives were becoming part of the story. And, and obviously the interior space. Uh, the interior is dominant in the work. If you look at the work, it's really, I think six to seven photographs where you see my grandparents, but all the rest 20, 30 photographs are just interiors uh, but at the same time you know it in the photograph as a as a very primarily it was always about keeping memory right uh, it, one of the core component at least you know, if you even if you think from the sense of archive or even if you just uh, think set from the sense of just family albums and I think memory is obviously a very uh, essential part of uh, you know at, for this work at least and and think in many for many work and uh, it, it doesn't need to be very, uh, you don't have to kind of force it in, it's just there, you know. 
we're carrying <clears throat> forward um, both time and these dream contrasts um, of images. It also carries forward into landscapes of river and lost land, which bring with them the memory that you just spoke about. And in this work, you reference traces of life that were associated with the land. But there's also the sense of giving into natural time and a certain acceptance. Um, could you speak about what this idea of uh, time and loss is, both with the land and with relationships? I think uh, one of the things that I was doing at the same time, I was working on this both project, you know. Uh, so even though they are both different work, different stories, I think there is a, obviously a common uh, thread, which is obviously me and how I look at, uh, you know, look at the environment or look at my family and how I perceive the world uh, through my understanding. And I think loss has always been, you know, something that had an effect on me, even though I was probably not consciously pursuing it, um, it was there and it made me, uh, I could connect through other things to my own probably personal sense of loss or uh, you know, experience. And uh, when I was photographing the river, um, which uh, also I've been doing for a long period of time, almost 10 years now, um, you know, it was also about the land or something that represents very human uh, aspect of you know life which is like you know, livestock house uh, homelands you know people who live their whole life or you know growing up uh, you know all, all the years but then losing that in a, in a, in suddenly um, by something a very natural phenomenon uh, was definitely a very I mean, a strong uh, talking uh, experience to see that in front of me. But I was also aware of how often these stories are portrayed quickly, you know, uh, quickly in a sense, because it, maybe they have certain news uh, info value and, and journalists and uh, TV journalists or photo journalists, uh, print media journalists, they would cover the news. But I think that uh, that's just a physical, uh, loss in a way because you know i mean you just see it physically and that's it it's just the land but you know it's not just that it's much deeper I mean, if i lo lose my home just uh, today and uh, the, where i grew up where i've been you know, living my whole life and probably the only place i have to live uh, that loss is something much deeper and longer and and you kind of have to go through that you have to grieve and uh, try to rebuild your life and I felt that story was there, and I felt that many uh, books, uh, novels, and music that I have grew up listening to or reading, they often dealt with this uh, uh, this phenomena of river erosion uh, or loss of lands uh, in much more deeper sense. Uh, the musicians would sing it always associating with, uh, with other philosophical aspect of life, you know, uh, uh, and, um, and saying for the books that I've read, uh, which followed through uh, not only the incident, but what happens for that, you know, what sort of change that brings in the community. So for me, I was also interested in that aspect, you know, how can the work become much more about the loss of lands, but over the period of time, the community trying to live through that. And the cycle of loss, uh, losing lands, but also the cycle of rising new lands. So there are many aspects that comes through when you're also you know, spending a, uh, spending that this many years on this place. And along with that, there's um, this element of nostalgia, which gets associated with memory, with time, with loss. And uh, finally, coming to an ongoing series of work that you've been um, creating with Elegy, there is this nostalgia that comes in with this um, documentation in black and white in some way that 
becomes timeless, but it also ends up representing this sort of uh, crumbling of time in historic spaces. And as you distance yourself away uh, from time and human relationships with this work, the time and architecture, uh, what are the elements that carry forward as connections uh, both in the emotional, personal sense and in national histories? And also how do you look at addressing these narrations and associations in your images with these two kinds of histories? So the, the work that you mentioned, of course, I mean, uh, it's a very much complex you know, subject matter, uh, partition, of course, and uh, due to partition, the, uh, the other stories that unfold afterwards with uh, East Pakistan and then eventually becoming Bangladesh, but also the, uh, you know, in a way, the migration, the long-term migration that happened within this Bengal, especially for uh, you know, the Muslim community from there and the Hindu community from here. And obviously, initially, I was looking at the architecture most predominantly, um, just something that I find interesting as a, as a, you know, within a space and three-dimensionally. But at the same time, the fact that the, the element of decay, you know, again, uh, which you can really see physically unfolding in front of you in such large scale. And I, I, I have to be honest, that was my, um, you know, that's how I was drawn into that, uh, especially after working about my grandparents and also the river, which looks at, you know, uh, so, sometimes it's looking at, uh, you know, decay in human form. Sometimes it's looking at the loss of lands, you know, and uh, so naturally I was drawn into this new work, which was looking at decay, but through a different context of, you know, 47 partition or, you know, um, an architecture. Uh, but uh, as, as I was, you know, traveling these places more and more, I, I realized these were also homes, you know, like these were also places which were inhabited by families, people, you know, communities. Uh, and, but then you can sense then there, there was this sudden departure, right? It, it was not like a goodbye, proper, nice goodbye. It was goodbye that was probably not something preferred or uh, one would uh, choose by themselves rather than have to decide forcefully due to other circumstances. And I, I kind of, it, maybe it's just me, you know, maybe it's just how I am, something primal that I feel uh, for many things. But often when I would find myself in these places, I would feel even the, these, you know, these places, the trees, you will see often many trees in these areas because, uh, you know, these trees were probably planted quite long time. These were not, often not very new trees. They're quite old trees, you know. And you can sense that sort of, you know, that aging, that, uh, the depth of time in a way. And also you could sense the emptiness in these places, which kind of creates a sense of longing, probably a longing, not necessarily for the people who left this place, but even maybe the place who could feel a longing to have the, them back. You know, it's just some, a lot of thing that happens in your mind. I think, you know, if I would say that, you know, even all these three are, you know, separate body of works in terms of their story and context, I would say uh, it is a larger trilogy, maybe a trilogy of time in, for me, you know, especially in these last 10, 12 years that I probably have been thinking of the medium of photography. And uh, the reason I'm calling it a, the time trilogy is uh, because I think all of this three work in its core essence deals with the materiality of time, as you said, in the physical aspect, but also in the aspect of non-physicality.